it feels almost wrong. It feels like blasphemous, but like, I'm like, why are we rating a horror one star? Because it was gory. Are we on the same page? I'm not sure. And I'm really enjoying this. So, spooky season has begun. It's time for the spooky content. I am so excited. I'm, I'm just ready to read all the thrillers, mystery, and horror. Horror. Here's the thing with horror. <laughs> I have been jealous of seeing a lot of people reading horror lately because I have never read a lot of horror. I've got one little square horror shelf here and I don't really know what my taste in horror is. I went back at previous years and last year I only read eight horror and I feel like I read my first real horror last year or maybe the year before. And I have only read four horror this year total of all the books I've read and two of those are middle grade. <laughs> two of them are middle grade the year before as well. So I just haven't read a lot of horror and I've just got back from holiday and I'm feeling like I'm not really in the swing of things. <laughs> and so I want to read seven books in seven days. I did this a few months ago where I did seven and readathons, reading seven books in seven days. And it really like got me into reading. It really got me in a great swing of things in reading. So I really feel like I need that at the moment. So I thought it'd be a good idea to read seven horror books and try and figure out what my taste is. What do I like in horror? Cause at the moment I have no idea. <laughs> Lord help me, let's see what happens. Generally, I don't have a clue because I don't think I've read enough of it to really know. You know, fantasy, mystery, thrillers, even contemporaries. I pretty much know what my taste is, what I like to read. But with horror, I see a lot of people talking about horror books and I'm like, I don't know which ones I should read. So we're gonna try and put it to the test this week. Um, Something else we need to taste test. Something else we, <laughs> something else we need to put to the test is, can I like coffee, right? God, what's going on guys? Where's the cheers, man? You guys, when I did my 24 hour reading vlog, oh, <laughs> they clowned me. They, I, I actually felt a bit attacked for how I made coffee and that. I don't think how I made coffee is very different to how many people make coffee at home in the UK. Instant coffee is a very common thing. I don't feel like a lot of people have coffee machines. You really attacked me. Like, <laughs> I feel very attacked! Relax. That's the most, you know, controversial thing I've ever done on Brexit was make coffee. So, I asked you guys on Instagram and on my community page on YouTube, what coffee do you think I would like? What coffee do you think I would like? And each day we're gonna be going and buying a coffee and trying it and seeing, can I like coffee? And I feel like everyone on booktube loves coffee and I just feel like we need to put that to the test as well. So this week we're gonna be doing two things, finding out my taste in horror books and finding out my taste in coffee with your recommendations. I remember Kayla did this for like a week readathon she did one year. She like got people's recommendations for coffee to buy every day. Very similar thing. So let me just take you through quickly my potential TBR. I'm not gonna go through the synopses of these. We'll go through them when we read them. So two that I definitely wanna read are The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix and Ring Shout by PG Jenny Clark. This one's short, this one's not, but we are gonna be starting with this today, I think. So we'll talk about that in a sec. Another one I definitely wanna read is The House of Lost Horizons. This technically is a murder mystery, but my dad has read this. It's a graphic novel. And he says it could definitely class as horror as well, particularly like in the latter parts so I think this could be a good pick for a day that I'm busy and just need a quick graphic novel. I also went and purchased two like horror novellas that I've seen a lot of people reading. The first is Comfort Me With Apples, the second is arriving today it's The Thing Between Us, That Thing Between Us, I can't remember what the title is. <laughs> That one. So they're again good for like, we're trying to read seven books in seven days. I can't read seven novels in seven days because I have to do other stuff. <laughs> so that's good for days that I'm busy. I have two audiobooks again for days that I'm busy that are like novellas. I've got Yellow Jessamine by Caitlin Starlin and I've got Night of the Mannequins by, is that Stephen Graham Jones? I feel like it is. So those are options as well. And then two other novels that I would be interested in reading because we don't have a lot of like full length novels. I'd like to try and read one of these in this vlog as well. We have The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson and we have Horrid by Katrina Leno which for all of last year was one of the books I wanted to get to most and then I just didn't get to it and like you know the excitement dissipates. So there's like nine books there I think we'll pick whatever seven fit the mood of the day. But we're gonna be starting with The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. Today I don't really have any work that I have to do. I am gonna see a film 
tonight. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> but um, I feel like today's probably the best day where I don't have much to do. Every other day this week, I'm probably gonna have to like do stuff, whereas this is quite long. So it has to be done on the day I don't have much to do. I mean, it is already 12 o'clock. I haven't time managed very well this morning. I had a bath, you know, I got ready. Like. <laughs> Now, I mentioned this recently in my full TBR that I was going to read this, and everyone was like, oh, girl, I hated it. <laughs> This yes. is a concern and a worry. <laughs> I'm so excited for it though. All I know is that we have this final girl support group. So, you know, in the horror movie trope, you have the final girl who beats the killer in real life, I guess, in this book. We've got this group of final girls who support one another, who talk through what they've gone through because they're the only ones that understand. And then they start getting killed off one by one. And I know it's got a lot of like um, mixed media in it, which really excites me. It's got like a lot of letters, I think reviews, horror movie stuff. And that really excites me and I've never read a Grady Hendrix. I've heard so many good things about so many Grady Hendrix like My Best Friend's Exorcism, Horror Store. I want to read all of them. This is the one I own. I recognize it might not be the best one to start with but we're gonna give it a go. So my plan is, how long is it? Yeah just under 400 pages. So my plan is let's read the first 100 pages and then I will go out and get some coffee but let's get 100 pages in and see what we think. But I'm really excited. I have the audiobook as well but I don't know how much I'm gonna use it because it didn't have great reviews on the script. Everyone had a problem with the narrator's voice and I was like okay. <laughs> already 100 pages into Final Girl Support Group and I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying it. I know a lot of people said they didn't like it, but I think this is kind of what I want from horror, like campy, over the top, ridiculous, like slasher film. Like I think this is kind of what I what I want. We're following Lynette, who is one of the final girls who goes to the support group and it becomes clear very quickly that like someone's picking them off. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate. One of them dies at the start, then someone like tries to snipe her apartment when she and another one of the girls are in it. And when she tries to escape, hang on, let me move this over a bit. <laughs> All of her like planned exit routes that she's had to kind of get her away have been tampered with. Her car tire has been slashed, stuff like that. So she has like nowhere to go and she's on the run and we don't know who we can trust. And I'm just really enjoying it. And there's um, mixed media elements after every chapter. So as you can see, they're, they're black lines. They're pretty, pretty often. And that will be like uh, a movie reviews, um, books, like academic books written about this phenomena, like stuff around that, kind of commenting on the women and their cases. And it's just very interesting. We don't really know what Lynette's uh, event, like where she became a final girl, happened. And that's something I'm very intrigued in. It's just like, it's ridiculous. Like all the stuff that's happening is so over the top, but I love it. I recently read for my, my book club, uh, Final Girls by Riley Sager. And I actually really, I didn't really like it. I think I gave it three stars. I found it really boring, right? This is what I wanted from a Final Girls book. Like all of them being connected. Cause in Final Girls you think they're connected, but they're not really. Like, <laughs> all these women knowing each other, relying on each other, and then start getting picked off one by one. There's a good amount of them. I feel like there's six roughly of them and it's just like campy. <laughs> I think I like campy horror. I think that's what I like because I can't actually get too scared because <laughs> it's like ridiculous, you know? It's just very readable, very like quickly readable and I'm having a good time reading it. Is it like the greatest piece of literature I've ever read? No, but that's not what I want from this. <laughs> but let's go get our first coffee of the video. Are we nervous? I'm actually like shaking in my boots. I feel terrified. Okay, so we're here. The first I have to brief you guys on some bad news because I know some of you are gonna be really mad at me. <laughs> gonna be so mad. I'm not getting my coffee from Starbucks. <laughs> How could you do this to me? Question mark. 
basically, it's not out of choice. There's just no Starbucks near to me. The closest one, it would be like an hour's round trip every day to get a cup of coffee, which I might not even like. So I'm just not about to do that. Like, in the UK, we have another chain called Costa. And I have one that we're here now, which is a drive through which is like way better because I can like film and like I can try the coffee in the car. Everyone mad at me. I'm not getting from Starbucks. And I know some of you are going to be really upset about that because you Americans like adore Starbucks. But I've always preferred Costa's hot chocolates because that's always my drink. So that's what we're doing. People in the car next to me are looking at me. <laughs> so I had a look through the suggestions and the one I've decided to go with today is a mocha. Am I saying that right? I googled it. I'm very insecure about my limited knowledge of like coffee culture and like what you do. Like if I were to get an iced one, you know like ones that come with a gradient, like from dark to light are you supposed to shake it or not shake it i don't know these things <laughs> but yeah we're gonna get a mocha because it's a hot chocolate with coffee in it um and i feel like that's my best bet because i love hot chocolate i'm obsessed with hot chocolate with this experiment with us trying a coffee every day what i want to examine is <laughs> do i like the taste like is that possible can i ever like coffee and does it give me more energy because that's the number one thing i've always been most jealous of of people who like coffee is like having something you can ha have that gives you more energy that gives you a boost i don't like energy drinks i don't like coffee until now <laughs> so that's the always thing i've always been jealous of so will i suddenly have loads of energy read this book so fast like my reading speed suddenly quadruples i don't know so let me stop putting this off and let's go get our first coffee drink oh my god why am i nervous I feel very nervous about this. Hi, can I have a small mocha, please? Small mocha, yeah. And that's it, thank you. It's mocha. Mocha. The thing I watched said mocha. Oh my god. Uh, yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good you too, thank you. Right. <laughs> Turns out I was saying it wrong. <laughs> I can smell the coffee. <laughs> That's fucking <laughs> scary as fuck. What is that? Okay, right. Okay. Oh girl. Oh girl. <laughs> yeah, that's vile. <laughs> How do people drink this? It doesn't even taste like a hot chocolate, it just tastes like the coffee I made. It's just so bitter. Like surely a hot chocolate version of it is supposed to be sweet. Like what? I don't like it. <laughs> It's more drinkable than the one I made. I can drink this because I want to put the energy stuff to the test because it's just so bitter. I can't get over how bitter it is. You guys, I don't know how we're going to do this. <laughs> well, I don't feel like that coffee gave me any more energy. This is a scam. Honestly, I don't know if I can do this for seven days. <laughs> I can't do it. You can. can't. You can do it. You can. You can. Anyway, so I am now 230 pages into the Final Girl Support Group. I'm still really enjoying it. <laughs> I went and I had a look on the Goodreads. I went the Goodreads. <laughs> because I was feeling guilty. I was like, I shouldn't be loving this. Like, I feel like everyone has not enjoyed this. But Mara gave it 4.5, which like is ridiculous. Like Mara <laughs> never gives fives. <laughs> Mara from Books Like Woe, she like, like a five star I think for her is a favourite all time, 4.5 is a favourite of the year, so this is like high praise, and I'm like you and me Mara, you and me Mara, we're just like the same taste. <laughs> I'm just loving how silly and like campy and over the top it is, and I know there's a lot of horror references, probably to other horror movies and Final Girls, I'm gonna be honest I don't get the references because I haven't watched a lot of horror movies, like The Shining is pretty much <laughs> all I've watched. I did watch the Exorcist when I was like five days old with my dad. <laughs> but, but I'm really loving this. There's been some twists that made me gasp. And like the, the mark of a good twist is that like you 
gasp when it gets revealed but now it's like 80 pages later it's just another part of the story that I've gotten used to like a good twist is something that you you're shocked when it happens but then when it goes into the story you're like it's accepted as another piece of information does that make sense I do feel like this book though is the kind of book you have to read in one day <laughs> It's so like ridiculous that you just have to like get it out of your system. You just have to read it in one day. I feel like if you were to not be able to read this book quickly, you wouldn't enjoy it as much. You just have to like consume it fast. It's like McDonald's. Do you know what I mean? You just have to like get it over with <laughs> and you love it while you're, you're doing it. But if I had to like eat a McDonald's meal over the course of a day, it would get stale. It would get like, once it's cooled down, the fries aren't good. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like you have to, like, wow, what a great analogy. <laughs> You have to get out of the way quickly. And I'm really enjoying um, older characters, particularly our protagonist. I'm not quite sure how old she is because I'm struggling to place when her um, like final girls moment happened, what year it was. Was it the 80s? But I was saying, actually, you can see <laughs> the sequel just arrived for the Thursday Murder Club, The Bullet That Missed. Look at those sprayed edges. <laughs> you know, I've been saying when reading that series how much I'm loving reading older characters and how I want to read it in more genres and I'm really enjoying it in this in more of like a horror I'd love to see it in fantasy like I really like this perspective now you guys we're going to the cinema this is my first time going to the cinema since pre-covid crazy huh I am not going to see don't worry darling although I do want to see that we're gonna go me and my parents <laughs> Um, are gonna go see See How They Run, which is starring Saoirse Ronan. Oh my God, I've just realized. <laughs> the last film I went to see in the cinema, what time is it? How long have I got? Okay, I've got 10 minutes for I have to go. Um, last one I went to see the cinema before COVID was Little Women. Cause I remember that was just like, I think that was maybe in February, January, February of 2020. And I remember being like, I think the news was just breaking of it happening in China. And I remember like the guy sitting next to me started coughing and I was like, you know, I've had issues with health anxiety. So that was like, I was <laughs> not good out here. But anyways, I love this woman, one of my favorite films. And see how they run her Saoirse Ronan in. And Don't Worry Darling has Florence Pugh. I'm obviously just obsessed with the cast of Little Women. And it's a murder mystery. It's set like at this theatre. It's like actors getting killed. I am so excited. It looks very like campy, fun murder mystery. And I'm just so happy with, you know, Knives Out, like all this murder mystery content getting into the mainstream and being made. So yeah, we're gonna go see see how they run. And I will, luckily I'm not driving because my, <laughs> my parents are taking me and paying. <laughs> I am going to continue reading this in the car on the way there and back. And then when we get back, I will finish it. But yeah, it's super quick read. I'm having a lot of fun. What a great start to the seven books. I feel kind of like I shouldn't like it though. I feel like everyone's gonna be like, Megan, coffee and this in one day. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> the craziest thing to happen to me. I can't I can't believe it. So I went to the cinema, we'll talk about that in a second, to see the film. And then me and my parents went out for dinner and um we had our meal, or whatever. And then <laughs> the waitress stops us and says, I'm a big fan of your channel. I don't know how to react. I've never met one of you before. I've, ne I've never met one of you before. And hi, Bethany, if you're watching. Bethany was just the kindest person ever. It was just amazing to meet you, Bethany, if you're watching. I can't believe how lovely you were and kind. Yeah, I've never met one of you guys before, so. <laughs> It was pretty, it was pretty great. I did not expect the first time I met one of you guys to be in a prezzo. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that at all. If you're in the UK and you know Prezzo, it's like an Italian restaurant. I thought, you know, bookshop maybe. I don't know, but. <laughs> so yeah, Bethany, thank you for being so lovely. You completely made not just my day, like my month. This is like a life highlight. <laughs> I'm like a bit shocked. Like I wasn't wasn't expecting it. I was just like, I just watched a film. I was chilling out, eating my carbonara. <laughs> a lovely person to be my first, my first person to meet, my first subscriber to meet. So yeah, wow. Wow. I just, <laughs> I've never met someone before who watched my videos. So like, I never, I kind of forgot. Like, <laughs> 
it's easy to forget there's people <laughs> behind behind the screen sometimes. So um Wow, I don't feel like I can read now. I feel like I need to go for a run or something to get, I'm like amped up. <laughs> Let's talk about the film. <laughs> the film, however, was not the highlight of my movie. Okay, my initial reaction, cause it's a murder mystery, right? If you don't know, it's like this 1950s murder mystery. I thought this would be one of my favorite films of all time. Um, it wasn't. I thought it'd be a five star. My initial reaction was to give it a 3.5, but I think that's similar to when I gave The Appeal a 3.5, just because I was so disappointed. Cause it was like, beyond a five star prediction and it wasn't that. So I think like a four. I still enjoyed it. It just wasn't like as amazing as I thought it would be. Like for example, Knives Out for me is a five star murder mystery film and it's not as good as that. But it does, towards the end, it does <laughs> go an interesting direction. Oh also, this thing between us arrived. It's a little bit longer than I thought it would be. I don't know, the font isn't, well I thought I suppose the font's not too big. I thought, you know, comfort me with Apple. I mean, that's quite a vast difference. <laughs> I'm going to try and finish, it's like half nine I think. I'm gonna try and finish this tonight. If not, I'll, I'll finish off tomorrow. Well, I've only read 30 pages since I last spoke to you, so I've got like 140 pages left. But yeah, okay, let's go read. I, <laughs> I feel like everyone watching is gonna be like, okay girl, we get it. Like, you had a nice time, <laughs> go read. But I'm like, wow, this is, <laughs> A moment, a moment in hi ah, that's history. <laughs> ah, that's history. <laughs> <sighs> morning. Okay, hey. <laughs> I finished Final Girl Support Group this morning. I read some more last night and then finished off this morning. And I'm gonna give it four stars. I I didn't. I really enjoyed it, but I did not enjoy the end third as much. I really didn't. I feel like it got a bit repetitive. Hmm. <laughs> A bit like obvious in what it's trying to say. No, I don't know if I say that. I don't know if I say that. Am I just chatting shit? I think I'm just chatting shit. I don't think I believe that. You know, I didn't feel the same excitement, the same drama, you know, that I did in the first part, but I still enjoyed it. I can understand why people hate this <laughs> because it is like very on the nose. <laughs> you know, it's trying to say something and I think it does bring up some interesting points, but it's like, slasher, gore, ridiculous, you know, you know when you read a book and by the end people should not be alive. Like this, like this should not be happening. This is just ridiculous. Like it reaches that point, but I like that. I think where I may have trouble with horror in, is when it's more, I have trouble when it's more like uh, trying to be intelligent. <laughs> you know, when like this represents this and this means this and like and I think that's when I start to struggle because I'm like just give me the ridiculous gore I think I might be <laughs> and this still had something to say and this still had a message but it was much more like open and transparent about what it was trying to say I didn't have to think too hard about it I liked how referential it was I mean I didn't even I enjoyed this not even knowing which films the girls were supposed to represent. I really don't know. If someone could tell me in the comments which films all the different girls represent, I would love to know. <laughs> Cause I, ha I have no idea. <laughs> I read some reviews, I was like reading through some of the bad reviews and some were like, this made me feel sick. It was so gory. And I'm like, why are we here? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm a wimp, right? I'm a bit of a baby. I do not watch much horror films. Like, I think if I had to watch this, I would find it harder. Reading it is a certain degree of separation. But like, I'm like, why are we rating a horror one star? Because it was gory. Are we on the same page? I'm not sure. So, the question is, which of these bad boys or the audiobooks do we read today? That's what we decide. Oh, actually, no, first point of call. I'm not getting a coffee today. I, I really don't want to, I'm so sorry. I'm still gonna title this video Seven Coffees in Seven Days because that's what the like goal was and I'm not letting you know before you click on the video that failure has become. The idea of getting coffee makes me involuntarily feel sick. Like my body's initial response is to feel sick. So I'm not getting coffee. I might get one tomorrow. I might try again. <laughs>
I'm very disappointed. I'm very sad. I'm, I'm almost heartbroken. Okay, so today I don't have a super busy day. I'm not filming and editing a video, which I will be doing tomorrow and the day after. So we're gonna have to have quick books then. Yeah, today I have got a busy evening, which is typically when I get the most of my reading done. So I've got a Zoom call with my top tier patrons. We have one every month from six till seven. And then at eight o'clock, I have the quiz night that I do with my patrons, which I'm so excited for. And then today I'm doing the quiz night questions this morning. I don't know how long it will take me, probably a couple hours, depending on how many rounds I do. I don't really, I can't really listen to an audiobook whilst I work. I'm not really good at that, or whilst I do anything that requires my brain. <laughs> so what one do we pick? I don't know. Let's go for this thing between us. I kind of want to do Ring Shout, but I feel a bit like my chest is paying up today and I really want to read Ring Shout when I'm like in a good mood. <laughs> but let's try this thing between us. I don't really know what this is about. Do we want to know or do we want to go in not knowing anything? This couple was bought the world's most advanced smart speaker and then the wife is killed or the girlie is killed. That's all we need to know. I'll tell you more about it once I'm a bit of the way through it. But yeah, the audiobook for this is five hours long. So that should only take me like two hours of reading overall. So I think... Let's go for that. Let's read this this thing between us today. Laura, I need to sit there. You gotta move. Can you move, please? I literally just moved her and I leave the room for two seconds. She's back on the chair. Come on, back on the bed. <laughs> please. Come on. Good girl. See, she knows. She just wonders if she can get away with it. <laughs> okay, same place, much later in the day. <laughs> um, I'm just about to have my Zoom call with my Rora. Oh my God, ironic. <laughs> she wants to be here for the call. She's like, bitch, it's named after me. You need to let me man it. <laughs> but with my team Rora patrons, we're about to have our Zoom call. But I am about 100 pages into this thing between us. It's like 250 pages long. And I am enjoying it so far. It hasn't gotten really scary yet. I feel like the horror hasn't begun yet. So I feel like I shouldn't even really be talking to you yet, but now's a good time in my life to talk to you. Basically we're following this guy who's uh, wife has died and there's a lot of grief surrounding him uh, we open up kind of in the first part which is most of what I've read him saying you do this you do that talking to his wife like when you used to do this when you used to do that or something like that and so I think that is quite an impactful way to open the story anytime an author uses you it definitely like draws me in and like and stares me my eyebrows looking a bit crazy today Anyways, be careful of your tongue. I don't yeah, need to be careful, be careful of my tongue. Be careful of your tongue when you're talking about women's looks. I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying the writing. I think the writing of it is really, really good. It's got a really good, like, tone of voice. This kind of despair, but like jokiness to it as well but the horror hasn't started yet so i feel like i can't really tell you other than like a bit of like a ghost vibe or spirit vibe or something like that as if there's like a haunting happening i'm being careful to say too much as well because i feel like this is the kind of book that you shouldn't go into knowing too much because obviously i didn't really know anything going into it um so yeah other than that it hasn't been scary yet, but I feel like now that we've gotten the context out of the way with what happened to his wife and how he's feeling and the kind of despair he's in, now the horror is going to begin. So I'm going to try and finish this tonight, but I don't think I'm going to be able to, especially Tom's now coming round. <laughs> I didn't think he'd be able to make it tonight, but he's going to be coming around tonight and I haven't seen him in quite a few days. So I feel like I may not finish this today, but as long as we read seven books in seven days, it doesn't have to be one book each day, but I feel like I made the wrong decision with what book I was supposed to read today, kind of. But I am enjoying it, I'm enjoying it, and I'm ready for it to get scary. I feel like this is gonna get like psychological, fucked up scary, is what I'm kind of expecting, so we shall see. Also the cover is just kind of like, creepy look at that even on the, the camera does not like it it's like what the fuck so yeah me and rora now in my clothes <laughs> but me and rora we're gonna we're gonna have our zoom call she's here to chair it <laughs> hey i heard you got a new best friend yet it's a bit i won't pretend that it doesn't matter it's someone else. okay hey Monday. It's a case of the Mondays. <laughs> so it's Monday and I have only just finished this thing between us. I had a busy day editing today. So yes, we are. <laughs> 
<laughs> we are two books in three days, but it's fine. We'll just read two books in one day. It'll be fine. It's no problem. I finished this. Uh, I've got to be honest with you. <laughs> just like over my head. Over my head. I I'm nodding like I understand, but I'm not so sure I do. I've got to say, I enjoyed the first 100 pages of this. Then the next 50 pages, I was like, okay, fine. Let's see where this goes. And the last 100 pages, I kind of had to force myself through. I was just kind of bored. I don't know. I like what this book says about grief. I liked, you know, reading from this perspective of this guy who's experiencing this deep, deep grief. He's in this deep, deep depression and the writing and the tone of voice definitely reflects that. And there's not really chapters. There's like five or four parts to this, sorry, four parts. And there's no chapters. It's just like him talking about everything he's experiencing and everything he's going through. And I liked that writing decision. I just gotta be honest, it lost me on the meaning. And we said this would be the problem. We said this would be the problem. <laughs> I said, I don't think like literary fiction horror where there's like this deep meaning and I can't figure out what it is. I don't think that's for me. And I think that's <laughs> what this book was, if I'm honest. So I'm gonna give it a three stars. I did think about a 3.5 cause there is a lot of aspects of it that I enjoy. I like the writing, you know, I liked the beginning. I liked the grief, the perspective. I liked the idea of what was happening, like what it said kind of about uh, surveillance <laughs> and you know, where it began, it began with this kind of Alexa-like machine that a lot of the story seems to stem from. I liked all of that, but like, I'm just lost. I just, <laughs> if you read this and you understand what the meaning of like the ending and all this is supposed to be, please slide into my DMs, I'm begging you. Cause I would love to know, I wanna know. Like. <laughs> I want to know what we're doing here. I knew we were like with the ending of this I knew we were trying to get somewhere <laughs> But I could not I could not figure out for the life of me Where so I think we've conclusively we can say literary fiction horror Where there's like a deep meaning, but you're not gonna just tell me <laughs> I don't know. I don't have the same problem with like fantasy uh, and a thriller. Like I, I always say I love clever books. I love a clever book, but there's something about horror and like the absurdism that comes with horror. I just can't figure it out. Other genres, I like books that are clever and have hidden meanings that you have to figure out. But horror, I think because I almost like, I'm still a bit of a wimp. So I turn a blind eye a bit to some of the gore and like the scary stuff. I just like read it fast. I struggle to then draw conclusions perhaps is the issue. So we are at two books in three days, but it's not the end of the world, it's gonna be fine. And we are at one coffee in three days. <laughs> I just don't wanna do it. I've decided I'm not gonna read The Weight of Blood in this video because when I put it in my TBR Cluedo for this month, some a lot of people told me they loved the audiobook and the audiobook is on script, but it's not available for me to the fourth. So that leaves us with these four that we're definitely gonna read, and then one of the audiobooks, either Yellow Jessamine or Neither Mannequins. That's gonna be our TBR. Tomorrow will end up being either the graphic novel or Comfort Me With Apples, because tomorrow is my last super busy work day of the week. I am, I'm really excited to find that. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. A woman can only be pushed so far, and I'm right on the edge. I'm gonna go to bed now, bye. <laughs> Oh my god, that hurts. Okay, hi. <laughs> so I'm getting ready this morning and I made the executive decision today is gonna be the day that I read two books. Now you may say, Megan, that doesn't make any sense because today's like your most busy day. Ah! <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so today I need to film the end of my holiday vlog because it just kind of ends and I need like an ending <laughs> to put a bit of context in. So I need to film that edit the ending, export that, get that uploading, make the thumbnail for that. And I also need to film Book Haul, which will be the last video I uploaded for you. And that's got a sponsorship in it, which I need to film some clips for, take some pictures for. So I need to do that and edit as much of that video as I can. I need to definitely edit the start so I can send it to the sponsor, but I need to edit as much of it as I can. Hopefully, I should edit all of it. That is the goal for today. <laughs> 
and I'm gonna read two books. But I've decided um, I have, I'm doing some stuff like making the thumbnail, getting ready now where I can listen to an audiobook. So I'm listening to Night of the Mannequins because it's only like, I think the audiobook itself is three hours long. I've been listening since I got back on holiday to audiobooks. So usually when I'm not reading it physically, I listen at 1.8 speed, but I'm only imagining 1.5 at the moment. So it's gonna take me about two hours worth of listening to read that throughout the day, but I think I should be able to finish it. I need to make dinner tonight as well because my mum's not very well. So I think throughout the day I will finish Night of the Mannequins doing those things. And then uh, tonight I will read the graphic novel, The House of Lost Horizons, I think it is. So that's the plan. I'm gonna go do lots of work. <laughs> and I will see you later this evening. Who said I was gonna finish two books today? That's definitely not me, absolutely not. <laughs> That's not happening. All right. Okay, so I finished Night of the Mannequins, did not take me too long. I really don't wanna tell you what this is about because it's only two hours long, the audiobook, so it's probably something ridiculous, like 60 pages long. Like it's probably tiny, I don't know, because I only read it via the audiobook. Just know we've got a group of friends, they try to perform a prank, the group tries to perform a prank on one of them using a mannequin, and then the mannequin maybe comes alive, does it? We don't know. <laughs> I enjoyed this, but I didn't Love it. I think novellas, I always enjoy the reading experience, but I never tend to really give them a five star. I love the satisfaction of reading a quick book, but like, I think a lot of my favorite books tend to be longer ones. I think I enjoy that journey. So for what it was, it was probably more a four star. I'm gonna give it a 3.5, just compared to like, I gave this a four star and I enjoyed this way more. So like, let's give it a 3.5. I feel like it's between the two that we've already read so far. What can I say without spoiling anything? <laughs> it definitely didn't go where I expected it to. There's like a twist, maybe just before the halfway mark. And I was, cause I was listening and I was doing other stuff while I worked today. By the way, I had such a busy day today. That's why we're not getting around to the graphic novel. To be fair, I could, but I want to watch stuff with Tom now and like just chill out with him. So it's not, he's going home tomorrow so I can get way more reading done when he's not here. I'm listening to it whilst I'm like doing work, making thumbnails or whatever. And I was like, hold on. Hold on a second. <laughs> um, what's going on? <laughs> what the heck is going on? So yeah, I appreciate the direction it went in. I really liked the writing. This is my second Stephen Graham Jones and I feel like his books often have this dark humor to them, especially this one. This one was more funny. I really liked the humor in it. I mean, I really enjoyed the book. There's not much that I can critique it on. Just in terms of my enjoyment, it was a 3.5, I think, cause it's so quick and short. Graphic novels, I easily give five stars, but yeah, novellas, I don't give a lot of five stars. But the ones I give five stars tend to be ones where it's like a novella linked to a series or something that I already love. Anyways, but it was another different type of horror, whereas this is like campy, slashery, referential to 80s slasher movies. This was more psychological, clever, hidden meanings. This one was like a kind of a mix of the two, I would say. Funny, but with a psychological element to it. So I think if you want a quick horror novella, the audiobook is great. The audiobook narrator is really, really good at like bringing everything to life. So tomorrow we will definitely read The House of Lost Horizons with either Ring Shout or Come For Me With Apples. I haven't decided which one. I mean, we'll read the other one another day, but depends what I'm in the mood for tomorrow. And then probably Friday, we'll read the other one on Thursday. And then Friday, I will probably read Horrid because I have some sprints with my patrons that I can read it on. So yeah, that's the plan. We're gonna get to seven guys. It's fine. We'll read two tomorrow. I definitely need to go to sleep because it was a long ass day. Let's go get some sleep and I'll see you in the morning. And I'm gonna try another coffee tomorrow because I'm driving. Oh, I could go Starbucks actually tomorrow because I have to go to where um, the Starbucks is because I have an orthodontist appointment. <laughs> so exciting to get a new retainer fitted. Yeah, I'll get a Starbucks. I'll have to ask my patrons, what can I get from Starbucks that I can't get from Costa? Because we'll have to take full advantage of that. And then we'll maybe try one more from Costa. But like, the thought of having coffee does make me feel a little bit sick. Just a little bit. Just a little bit nauseous and like wanting to not do that. <laughs> Okay, so I've come into town for a dentist or orthodontist appointment today and I've decided today we're going to read Comfort Me With Apples and the graphic novel because I've got reading sprints tonight but I haven't got a lot of time to read before that. But I feel like I could actually just read both of these probably in the sprints. But anyway, I'm going to go to the orthodontist now. I'm running late so I've got to go. But afterwards there is a Starbucks right here. How convenient. So I'm going to try and get something that uh, you guys said, oh, I don't really know, something you can only get in Starbucks. 
is that a frappuccino i don't know <laughs> I'm going to look through the Instagram suggestions whilst I'm waiting in the orthodontist because they're usually late and uh, see, yeah, see what we're going to get. Okay, right. This is it. The moment of truth. <laughs> I got a caramel frappuccino. Oh my God, I just dropped my straw. <laughs> I don't know if any of you actually recommended a caramel frappuccino, but like, I didn't want to like, they only had caramel, strawberries and cream or double chocolate on the board. And I didn't want to like, I don't know what I'm doing. I didn't want to like specialize it. So I just got this and I love caramel. I mean, obviously this is probably like one part coffee, 10 part, <laughs> 10 part sugar. She asked me, I said, caramel frappuccino. She went, is that with coffee? And I was like, I must stink of someone who doesn't drink coffee. Oh my goodness. <laughs> right, moment of truth, everyone. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble, in big trouble. See, I know even that it's like 20 parts caramel, one part coffee, but that coffee ruins it. I mean, it's so sweet. It's like, I'm just having the whipped cream at this point. Mm. The whipped cream and caramel on top is lovely. <laughs> I was gonna go Costa tomorrow regardless and get a caramel latte, but like, if I don't like this, what can save it? Do you know what I mean? I think some people just genetically don't like coffee because that's the only explanation at this point. It's so bitter, even with everything sweet. I just paid £4.20 for this. It's extortionate. God, what is wrong with you people? My goodness. <laughs> okay, it's much later and I'm on sprints with my patrons. Hey. Um, <laughs> and I just finished Comfort Me with Apples and I'm gonna give it five stars. We did it, we did it, Joe. I'm giving Comfort Me With Apples five stars. What is going on? <laughs> I don't wanna tell you much about this because I liked going into it like almost completely blind. I knew very little going into it. It's only a hundred page novella, so I really don't think you should know much going into it. We're following Sophia who the first like line that she says was, I was made for him. She's talking about how she just feels this deep love for her husband. Everything in her life is perfect. She lives in this perfect community where everyone loves one another. I was just so captivated by this the whole time. I read 84 pages in the first sprint we did, which was a 40 minute sprint. I just could not stop reading it. And then <laughs> I thought I loved it then, but then I read the last couple pages just now. And wow, the twist, eh? You wanted a twist? Like just the direction that this book goes in, I thought is incredible. I love... I can't say anything, <laughs> but I love the direction that this goes in. I've never really seen a book go in that direction before and it just touched on themes I don't think we see touched on a lot, but that themes that I think can be really like haunting and interesting for a horror novel and like what can I say? <laughs> Not giving anything away. The writing in this was beautiful as well, like beautifully haunting. It was like very writing that captured just how much she lived in this dream world. Everything is made for her and everything is perfect. And I, yeah, I really didn't expect the direction it went in though, but it makes total sense. And I just, I mean, you start seeing where all the clues for that have been laid throughout and I loved it. I loved it. I think this is another aspect of horror that I like, like eerie creepiness, everything seems perfect on the surface, but then everything starts to fall apart. I don't know, I really enjoyed this. If you've been thinking of picking this up, like it literally took me maybe 40 minutes, what, 45 minutes to read. It was so good. And I, I loved the ending, I loved it so much. I love also when a scene, there's like a creepiness to it and an unsettlingness to it, but it seems fairly normal. And then at the end, there's like a paragraph that is so out of the blue and out of like, what is expected and what is correct that gets me that gets me like <laughs> like a little a little paragraph that makes you go huh <laughs> i'd 100 recommend it this is the most successful book that we've done so far so i am now gonna go ahead and read the house of lost horizons this is a murder mystery graphic novel but I, my dad said it also has horror elements. This may be more murder mystery-y, but we know that that's my taste. So I feel like perhaps a murder mystery with horror elements could be also another route of success for like stuff that I will enjoy. So yeah, 
gonna go ahead and read this tonight as well. I will probably give you my thoughts in the morning just because I will be really tired. I'm gonna go get in bed now. Yeah, super excited to read a graphic novel. What a treat. It's really late, but I have to check in with you, otherwise we miss the day. I'm so tired, I didn't even, I'm wearing the Brussels sprout shirt. I can't even be bothered to like set up a tripod, so I'm holding you in the palm of my hand. <laughs> See, this is the reason that, I mean, I was gonna say every time I do these videos, this is only my second time, but like why I realize I shouldn't do it, because there's always a day in the, in the series where I'm like, it's just not the vibe, babes. It is just not the vibe it is just not the vibe like get me out of here get me out of here <laughs> get that fire exit door i'm off because you know i don't read every day there's some days where i'm busier when i want to watch stuff more so today i like ended up watching lots of strictly come dancing with my mom <laughs> and now it's like half 11 when i usually go to sleep like half 10 like what the fuck so last night I did finish, uh, I read and finished in like one sprint, The House of Lost Horizons. I'm sad to report that like this wasn't bad, I enjoyed it. It's like, it is definitely more murder mystery than it is horror. It does have some horror elements to it. No, it's like a crossover of the two genres, but it definitely is more murder mystery. And I'm sorry to report, I was a bit disappointed. It wasn't bad, I'm giving it like a 3.5. I enjoyed the experience, but I already know like I'm gonna forget about this instantaneously. So basically in this, these two characters who are kind of like detectives in some ways are called to this house because her friend needed help with an auction she was having. When they get there, they find out that in the meantime, there's been a murder. There's lots of murders. It's all to do with the auctioning off of these like occult items. It kind of is like a love letter to like this, the the English home murder mystery locked room. There's a storm that's keeping them all stuck there. If you enjoy that kind of stuff, I think you will enjoy this. It was fine. <laughs> There were a few fun elements to this. I liked the illustration style. I liked the twist at the end. I liked the horror elements, but it was just fine. <laughs> and then today I have got on about almost 70 pages through Ring Shell, so I'm not doing terribly. Idiot but I was supposed to finish that today and it's not happened. And then tomorrow I need to film and edit a whole video, edit some of another video, read all of Horrid and read that. Is that even like humanly possible? <laughs> and I'm enjoying it, but I feel like because I've been kind of forcing myself to read today, I'm not enjoying it as much as I could do. And I've kind of read it very broken up, but basically we are following these characters who are fighting against the Ku Kluxes, which are the basically like demons that stem from being people being in the clans basically i'm doing a very bad job of describing this because i am horrific human appears as humans but they turn into demons and then these people are killing them and it's kind of like fantastical this is definitely the most fantastical one we've had so far even more so than company with apples my favorite part of it so far is probably the part of it that was really info dumpy because i could like understand what was happening <laughs> but because i think i've been listening to audiobook and reading it really broken up and there's also something about the writing style i don't think i'm 100 percent vibing with I have just been like struggling to follow it just a little bit not not struggling to follow it in the most basic sense of what's going on with the plot and like I can follow all of that fine but like the extra meaning behind everything because I feel like there's a lot of meaning packed into like every corner of this book you know so many people have given this five stars I feel like everyone gives this five stars I just feel like there's a lot of pressure pressure like a drip 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 Wow. <laughs> so anyways, I'm gonna go to sleep and then in the morning I'm gonna finish off Ring Shout and then I'll do some more reading sprints for my patrons at 12 o'clock in which I will read Horrid. She's over there somewhere, you can't see her. Okay. Night night, sleep well. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Good morning. 
Um, I don't know if you can see her. Can you see her? Queen Rora's here. <laughs> Those books are sacked up because I'm just about to film my September wrap up. I feel like last night I didn't do a very good job of like explaining to you. I did enjoy The House of Lost Horizons, a graphic novel. I just think perhaps like this is the only murder mystery-esque graphic novel I've ever seen. And I think maybe murder mystery doesn't work in graphic novels and that's why maybe we haven't seen a lot of them because I think it's harder, you know, with like a romance or something, you can kind of imagine the emotions people feel and like cute moments that might happen off page. Do you know what I mean? But murder mysteries, you kind of need to be given all of the information. You need red herrings, you need clues. And because this was just a short graphic novel, it didn't have time. Like we didn't really have many, many clues other than kind of the premise. So I had a lot of fun reading it. 3.5 is not a bad rating. I was just expecting like a five. And so I think I was a bit disappointed. I was also a little bit disappointed with Ring Shout. Now I gave this a 3.5 as well. Thank you, I'm just engaging. I am not engaging. Are you serious? It feels almost wrong. It feels like blasphemous. I feel like I'm not allowed to give this 3 or 5. Now I do want to, you know, state that me basically forcing myself to read like the first half of this yesterday when I didn't really want to read, I think could have really hampered my reading enjoyment. I did really enjoy this. I really enjoyed the meaning behind this and the imagination and like this kind of reimagining of our history with this horror and fantastical edge. The writing style, I don't know if it was for me. I know a lot of people love it. I could tell it was beautiful, but you know when you just vibe with certain writing styles and you don't vibe with others? I mean, it's just the way of life. I think I could have preferred this as a longer novel. I think there's certain elements and certain storylines that I wish could have been a bit longer. I don't know if body horrors for me. I'm a little bit squeamish. I think that might have turned me off of it as well. I don't know if body horror, like, but I don't know, I liked Wilder Girls and the body horror in that, but I suppose that's like YA, this is like adult. And I'm like, girl. I don't know if I deal well with that. I'm quite squeamish and stuff to do with the body. Like I have health anxiety. Well, I used to more so, but like, it just makes me feel a bit sick. <laughs> So, I now need to go film my September wrap-up, but I obviously need to read Horridge today. Now, I have to film and edit the September wrap-up. I've got reading sprints at 12 with my patrons. So what my plan is, is to film and edit the wrap-up. Edit the wrap-up quicker than I've edited a video in my entire life. And then I will read half of Horrid on the sprints, but I need to edit some more of this video today. I've only edited the first intro clip. I haven't edited anything else. And I have tomorrow to edit it, but I need to leave the house at like three o'clock tomorrow because me and my brother are going to see AJR in concert. So, and then Sunday I'm going out with Tom's family. So I need to edit the, some of this today. The audiobook for this is like seven hours long. The audiobook for this was like five. So it, even though it looks like a big difference, I don't think it will take me that much longer to read. That's the plan. I'm gonna go ahead and um, <laughs> go film this wrap up and I'll see you in a bit. halfway it's currently about six o'clock so i spent most of the day ed filming editing that video <laughs> that just made a real big noise are you so happy i think i probably started this about four o'clock and so i've read a bit and i've been with my family a bit and i'm really enjoying this i love it I love it and it gives me that buzz. My history of Katrina Leno, firstly, let me just say, is that You Must Not Miss was one of my favourite books. I think 2020 I read that. I love You Must Not Miss. And this has the same incredible writing. Like Katrina Leno, I just love the way she writes. So basically in this, all I need to tell you really is that our protagonist, her father has just passed away and because of money issues, her and her mother have had to move back into her mother's childhood home. And it's kind of like a haunted house situation. There's a lot of strange stuff going on with the house. There's strange stuff going on with the roses out in the garden that her mum definitely knows something about and won't tell her about. There's something to do with like a, a room that's closed off in the house. If you own this book, 
read it right now. This is the perfect book to read just as you fall into the depths of winter. I think, so what I've read so far has been from the start of October to the end of October-ish, I think maybe mid-October. It's perfect for like, today has been the first day that's really felt, I mean, it's been cold the past couple of days, but today it's been so like, it was foggy this morning and then it's been raining loads this evening. It really feels like autumn is here and this just feels like a treat to read right now. The writing is so like atmospheric. It like, that's why I say it's so perfect to read right now. Cause like, because she's moved from Los Angeles to Maine that's a big difference in like weather and so she's really noticing and describing everything you see around her so that's a really interesting character choice because if it was a character who'd lived there all their lives they wouldn't that wouldn't be normal for him to notice everything but she's like pointing everything out and it just feels so autumnal so if you own this please read it right now I'm not <laughs> Not joking. It reminds me a lot in, in What's Happening of White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson, but I didn't love that. But similar haunted house, similar kind of things happening in the haunted house. I'm intrigued to know what her mother knows because I don't know if I can trust her mother. <laughs> Something that is strange about this is that she eats books. She like, to control her anger, she's got anger issues. She like eat a page of a book and it calms her down. So that's happening. <laughs> I'm just having the best time reading it. I'm really just so looking forward to just curling up with the rain and the darkness outside um, and reading this book. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish it and then I will come back to you with my final thoughts and to wrap up this whole video. Okay, so it's pretty late, but I just finished Horrid by Katrina Leno. I'm gonna give this a 4.5. I loved the reading experience of this. I would say this is the fastest I've read a like book of this length, like a 300 page novel, since The Reckless Girls. That was another very quick read. And this, I just, I love. I loved it. It was so good. Just the atmosphere and the vibes and like the hauntingness of this. I loved so much. I just loved it. I did not move whilst reading the second half. I literally laid there in my bed in the same position. Didn't move my legs. Didn't I just read it. And I don't often do that. Often, you know, if I'm not 100% fitting a book, I have to kind of make myself read it, like set timers and shit. But this, you cannot pay me to put it down. I did like a lot of the reveals and how they were handled and like how Oh, you kind of got an inkling, you got an inkling, then something was confirmed, you got an inkling, something was confirmed. Like it was done well where I wouldn't say there were any particular shocks, but it all like paced well. The reason it's a 4.5 and not a 5 is I didn't love the ending. You know, I don't want to spoil anything, but the ending is pretty like, what's what I'm looking for? Unsatisfying. <laughs> And like, you know, books can have that. That's not a problem. Like sometimes I love that in books. For example, Wilder Girls, I think is pretty renowned for having like an abrupt, strange ending. But I love that. Catherine House has a very unresolved ending. And this does in a way too. But I just didn't feel like it worked as well with the rest of the story. I'd say like the setting up for that ending to be possible only really, really, really happens in the last like 20 pages. Where I would say with Wilder Girls and Catherine House, it's like a longer kind of journey throughout the novel that is less like sudden. But I really loved this. I'm so glad I read it. You know when you, you don't read a book for ages, it takes you ages to read a book. Like this last year was a book I wanted to read the most throughout most of the year and I didn't. When I felt kind of guilty, I was like, you know, the excitement has dissipated somewhat and that's my fault for not reading it quickly enough. But I genuinely feel like I was supposed to read this book this evening, just with the wind and the rain outside, with autumn just settling in. Like, I feel like this was the moment. <laughs> this was her moment to shine. But wow, what a moment. I will never forget. Let me rank all the books we read in this video in order of what I liked. Okay, so this would be my ranking with Night of the Mannequins probably... I would say above Ring Shout. So Night of the Mannequins in there. So yeah, we had three stars, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5 Night of the Mannequins, four, 4.5, five. So what do I like <laughs> in my horror? Looking at like these three in particular, this to me, I feel like I do enjoy campy, ridiculous, slasher, fun kind of horror. This is eerie, atmospheric, creepy, haunting, fucked up. <laughs> And I say this is fucked up as well. I don't know if I like my horror to have, you know, I think we knew this, but like hidden meaning that I'm supposed to decipher. Because if I'm reading horror, oh shit. If I'm reading horror, I'm kind of reading, you know when like you're a kid and you watch a scary film and you're kind of like watching from between your fingers. Cause I'm a baby. 
I feel like that's how I read horror, so that's not the best kind of horror for me. I would love, if anyone has any more recommendations like Comfort Me With Apples, I would absolutely love. I feel like one similar to these two is easier for me to find, but I can't think of many books that have been pitched to me that are similar to this. So if you have any recommendations, please let me know. But yeah, let me know what you think of my horror reading taste based on that ranking with Night of the Mannequins in there, because I did really enjoy that as well. So there we have it, seven horror books in seven days. I don't know how I did it. <laughs> I'm not usually one for reading a book every day, but these videos I always find they're really difficult in the moment, like filming, I find it difficult to read that many books in one go, but then straight afterwards I'm like, let me add them. <laughs> Like I'm so ready to continue on reading. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got into the end, comment the apple emoji. We had to do it. Comment the apple emoji down below. Let me know what you think of my horror journey, my foray into some more horror. Let me know your favorite horror books, your favorite types of horror books to read. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.